Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Tuesday, January 7, 2020, and I'm back. I am back. Suddenly, since 2020 started, we have become extremely busy. <laughs> we have finally, 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 after years of looking, found a general contractor we think we can trust. <laughs> so we're starting the mostly fixing up our 20 year old house you know things that have worn out and need to be fixed I don't know if I've told you all yet but our kitchen counter sort of blew up it was Corian and evidently Corian can't take heat it can take heat for up to 20 years evidently but then on the 21st year if you put your deep fat fryer on it and you cook some fish in it it explodes your countertop who knew so anyway First thing we have to do is get a new countertop in our kitchen. So I've been really busy with that, plus something happened during Christmas to our internet. It is suddenly super slow. That last video that I showed you, sewing this top together, it took me almost three days to get that uploaded. I had to keep stopping it and restarting it, and stopping it and restarting it. Finally got it to upload. And when that happens, I'm like, that's it. I'm never making another video as long as I live. But then after a couple days, I get over it. So you all have a top. You have a top. Just like my top by now. A lot of you have said you've made it. Some of you asked me if it could be sleeveless. Yes, it can be sleeveless. But when you do sleeveless, you'll want to raise the armpit area here. Between these two notches, the front notch and the back notch, you'll want to raise it up between a half inch and an inch so you don't have baggies over here. You may even want to take the side seam in a little bit. You need a smaller hole if you're not going to put a sleeve in it. Simple as that, okay? I am going to put a sleeve in it. Now I'm going to tell you something shocking. <laughs> I'm always telling you something shocking, aren't I? Let's say surprising. I'm going to tell you something surprising. It is easier to put in a knit sleeve than it is to put in a woven one. Hmm? It's the truth. It's the truth, and the reason is a knit sleeve is practically the same distance around as your armhole is. A woven sleeve has a half inch to an inch of ease in it that you have to crimp and squish up to make your sleeve fit. There's also two different ways to put a sleeve in. You can put the sleeve in before you sew the side seams together. And you just sew all around the sleeve cap, leave the side, the side seams will be open on the sleeve, the side seam will be open on your blouse, and then you sew the side seam from the edge of your sleeve, even if it's all the way down here, you sew the side seam all the way up the sleeve and all the way down your blouse. I don't like to do it that way. A lot of people think it's easier, I don't. I like to sew my sleeve in the round because I can pop it up onto my free arm on my sewing machine. That's the neck. Don't sew the sleeve to the neck. I can pop it up to the free arm on my sewing machine and both of them around and you can just go around and around and around and sew it in. I prefer that. Okay? So, let's sew it together and put it in the garment. I like to do as much to my sleeves beforehand as I can before I put it in the shirt. Why? Because I just have this little bitty piece of fabric right here to work with right now. When it gets into the garment, I'm going to have the whole garment hanging around it and it's going to be harder to deal with. So, I am going to put my steam -a seam on the hem. Be sure you flatten everything out. These knits like to roll and you don't want to put that steam -a seam on top of a roll. You want to be sure it's flat. Pull it, pull it, pull it and it will flatten itself out. Now, do I use half inch or quarter inch? It depends. I always am going to sew the hem after I glue it. So, I only use a quarter inch. Plus, it's not a very deep hem. If I had a two inch hem or two and a half inch hem, I would use the half inch. And for those of you who don't know about steam -a seam here's the box. I'll put a link below to get it on Amazon. This stuff is fabulous, wonderful, awesome, and great. It comes in half inch, and it comes in quarter inch. I don't have a quarter inch box right now. 
if you only have half inch and you want it to be a quarter inch, take your rotary cutter and slice the thing in half and then you'll have two quarter inch strips. Okay? And notice, it's light. See the blue L-I-T-E? Light. Steam a seam two. Wonderful, fabulous, marvelous. I have probably got ten boxes in each house. Love this stuff. Okay, so you peel it apart and you put it on the very, very edge. Lauren was doing this when she was here for Christmas and I wasn't up here to help her and she thought she was supposed to put it up here where the fold of the hem is. No, 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 no. Put it down here all the way at the edge. Cut it away from the seam line. You're going to sew the side seams under this part. You're going to sew this together, 3 8 inch. So keep that tape away from that area because you don't want to sew through that until later. Let me throw that in the trash. Keep a trash can. I have trash cans all over my house. I had a cleaning lady back years ago when I used to work full time. And she used to clean this house for me. Make sure your iron's ready. Mine's not heated up yet. But I came home one day to pay her and she said, did you know you have 21 trash cans in this house? And I said, and there's something in every single one of them, isn't there? <laughs> I don't like to have to walk very far. I see my iron's got a facetally on it here. I keep a rag over here for cleaning my iron off. This steam seam is pro- ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my God, look at that, y'all. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with my iron? <gasps> Look at all that black stuff coming out of my iron. Oh my goodness. Let me pause this and figure out what the heck's wrong with my iron. I'm back. You know what was wrong with the iron? I had the knob on the iron itself turned way down low. It wasn't up on steam. And so when I was pushing it, uh, the water was coming out of the water tank and it was coming out all rusty looking. I don't know why it's not rusty. It's all clean and it's a new iron. Hey, y'all. <laughs> if you're going to give up every time there's something happens like that, you might as well not even start sewing. I tell you, I'm, I've been trying for hours and hours and hours to do a quilting video for you, watching me quilt. Everything that could go wrong with a long arm quilting machine went wrong. My thread broke and broke and broke and broke and broke. The needle was shredding the fabric. I changed the needle. I changed the thread. I worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. Finally just gave up. <laughs> gave up on the video. Not on quilting. I'll keep doing it till I get it right. Okay, we got our quarter inch down here on the very, 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 very edge. Hopefully my iron, let me take my towel and make sure it doesn't dribble all over the place. Again. Yeah, see it's ready now. And you're going to say, what iron is that? I'll put a link to the iron, you guys. It's expensive, but it's worth every penny. It's a Rowenta Perfect Steam. Echo Energy, whatever that means. Rowenta Perfect Steam. I've bought several of them. They're at Amazon. All right, let's iron this. Oh, and then I started to tell you. A big culprit of getting sticky stuff on the bottom of your iron is this steam seam. Because sometimes, a lot of times, the sticky stuff, there's a little bit of it on both sides. It's supposed to only be on one side, but some of it, you know, it just migrates to the other side of the tape. Put it down there. Gently, you're not making it permanent right now. So you're just putting it on for a couple seconds. We'll iron it a lot better later. But see the roll? This is the sticky part. No, the sticky part's under here. This is the top, this is the tape. No sticky, sticky. But sometimes some of the sticky part gets off on what's underneath. You can feel it, try to rub it off, make sure it's clean. But I usually don't. I just slap it on here and if it gets on my iron, I clean my iron with that iron cleaner stuff. You all know what the iron cleaner stuff is, right? This really wants to roll. Really wants to roll. And I'm the boss of it. So I'm telling it, be flat or else. 
B flat or else. All right, there we are. I'm going to iron it down just a few seconds. And I'm going to leave that tape on there. Now listen to me. Leave the tape on it. Leave the tape on it. I am going to take it over to the sewing machine. I am going to sew the side seams oh, right there, the side seam. I'm going to sew that 3 8 inch. And I don't want this sticky stuff sticking all over to itself here. So I'm going to leave that on. I'm going to sew in this side seam. Then I'm going to bring it back. I'm not putting it in the top yet. I'm going to bring it back over here to the iron. And then I'm going to put it on my sleeve board. And it will be in a circle then. And then I will fold it up one inch. I will remove the paper. I'll fold it up one inch and I'll press that down. So this sleeve will be seamed on the side seam. And it will be hemmed up before I put it in my ABB T with the Dondi Carler. I'm going to pin this together. Where am I going to pin it? I'm going to pin it at the 3 8 inch. ABB stands for anything but basic. I forgot to tell you guys that, but I'm sure you can see it over there at that website. At the DIBY Club. Boy, they really give you a lot, a lot of help. You guys don't even need me, really. You can just watch the DIBY Club. She's got fantastic videos. Lots and lots and lots and lots of help. So you don't really need me at all. I don't know why you all even watch me. Remember, I'm going to start in a little bit because this does not like to behave. And I'm using a zigzag stitch, a light zigzag stitch. Oh, crumb. Did it pull up again? Come on now. Let's don't give me trouble, people. It is. It's not moving. It's just... Ugh. It makes me so mad. See what I mean? It's always something. I'm going to start at the other end because that end is weird. Or I'll just cut this out and start over. It's being difficult. So I'm going to get a piece of paper. I'm going to put it under here. And I'm going to start sewing on this piece of paper. Let's see if it likes that. You have, yeah, see it likes that. And I just did it to get started. You have to be more stubborn than the sewing machine and the fabric. <laughs> you have to just be so determined that no matter what happens, you're going to keep on going. Stop. Take a walk. Eat some cake. Have a chocolate. Chew it and spit it out. <laughs> That's what I do. I've got to lose some weight around my tummy. I've got a cough drop in my mouth. Another thing that happens when you start making a video, your allergies. See how it went really, really, really smooth? And you see how smooth that was? Because it's got something sewn behind it. So, start with a little piece of paper. I'll have to get that paper off of there somehow. And it's a post-it note. I should have started with some real light doctor table paper. Or you can start with a piece of fabric, like you do when you're quilting, a little tail of fabric. <clears throat> knit is a little different. Cotton is much easier to sew, but knit is much nicer to wear, in my opinion. Okay, I have this piece of paper sewn to this. <laughs> I'm simply going to tear it off. I promise you. See there, now the paper's gone. It wasn't that bad. Okay, both sleeves are sewn. Trash cans, I told you I have trash cans. I have them everywhere. I have them under every single machine, under my long arm, under my tables. I have them everywhere. Okay, seams are in. Steam a seam, light is on the edge. Okay, you see here? I can't see what you can see because I forgot to turn the thing around. But see here we have a sleeve, two of them. I'm going to go hem it up, then I'm going to come back and sew it into the top. And I'll show you how I do that, okay? 
Let me show you up really close what this looks like. See? I think that's where I tore the paper out. Right there. Zigzag. 3 8 inch seam. The other side. 3 8 inch seam. I had that up on three and just a narrow zigzag. And here's the seam of seam, too light on the very edge and you can see that it's not over here into the seam allowance. You don't need it. I may serge this edge because the inside of the top is serged and then I need to fold this the opposite direction of the top. If you're not sure how big the hem is on this sleeve, go back and look at your pattern. Short sleeve, one inch hem. Remember it's got the little jutted out area over here so when you fold it up it matches the side. Alright, cut off your strings. Put it up on your sleeve board. You have to have a sleeve board. This is a sleeve board. You have to have a sleeve board. I'll see if I can find one and I'll link a sleeve board below, okay? You have to have one. I don't think they make them like this anymore. I really like this one. I've had it since I was a baby. <laughs> since I was a baby seamstress. They used to make covers for them. But now you just got to try to cut out your pattern and make your own. But you have to have a sleeve board. One end, one side is pointy. See the pointy end? And the other side is more rounded. And you can slip, and you can slip a lot of other stuff over it too. So I'm now going to pull the tape off. Now, what direction did I say we're supposed to press the side seam of the top? I didn't, did I? I may not have even said. We may not have discussed that subject yet. But I always, oh and look, I pressed it flat. I'm going to go back and serge this seam here because I've serged the sleeve. So I will serge that. I always press the garment side seam to the back. Garment side seam to the back. Usually it's because there's a bust dart in the front, so there's more, there's more um, fabric, more layers to the front, and so I press it to the back. And so since I usually press it to the back, I press them all to the back, and then I press the sleeve to the front. Okay? So, how do you know the front from the back, ladies? We've learned that already. How do you know the front of the sleeve from the back of the sleeve? You know it because of those notches. There's a single notch and there's a double notch. Double notch means back. Single notch means front. This is the front, so I'm going to press this seam toward the front because I want it to match up to the seam and butt up to the seam of the garment here. I don't want both seams going the same way in the garment because that will make it fat and you'll feel it against your body. I'm also going to clip this seam. I've taught you this before. I'm going to clip this seam at one inch for the exact same reason. I want the bottom hem to go the opposite way of the top hem. Mm -hmm. So you clip that and it doesn't ravel, and it doesn't ravel, and it doesn't ravel. So that goes to the front, this goes to the back. Then, get a decent pair of scissors. Some scissors cut, some scissors don't. I've got a thousand pair. I don't know why it is, but they don't. I trim this. I don't know why I trim it, I just do, because you can, because knit doesn't ravel. I don't trim that one because it's got the surged edge on it. Okay? So they're going the opposite way. You can see the sticky stuff on the edge. I'm going to fold the sticky stuff up one inch and flip that seam right there. If you have to cut it a little deeper, do, but I don't. That won't go deeper. There we go. You have to have seam gauges. Have seam gauges, a whole bunch of seam gauges, because you will use them. All right, so I'm going to measure one inch with my seam gauge, and it's right there. And the sticky stuff should hold until you iron it. This sticky stuff holds pretty good, this steam seam too light. There's an inch, there's an inch, 
This one kind of has the little angles right here because that's under your arm. Press it lightly, the glue will stick. That's not a permanent press, but it's enough that it will stay down until you go the rest of the, the way around. You don't want to do it permanent yet because you may come over here and you got a little bump or a fold or something. And you may need to lift that up and replace it. You never know what's going to happen, especially on the bottom of the shirt when you're hemming it. The longer way around it is, the more opportunity for the material to misbehave. Yeah. It wants to misbehave. For some reason, it does not want to be a garment. It wants to be on the wool, and it wants to stay there <laughs> forever. Oh. So you've got to be persistent and patient. You know, you're not going to do fire. If you work and you go to work every day, so on Saturday, so on Sunday after church. So at night, if you can get your kids in bed early enough. Can't do anything with kids around. When Pumpkin Pants comes over, <laughs> there's no machine on anywhere. <laughs> It's grandma machine is on. Now some people will just pull that and put it and not mess with it like I am, but I'm just so picky about everything. Some people will just go like this and press it down. I've seen Angela Wolf do that when she does alterations. I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you know that's perfect? That's an inch right there. Let's see what's going on over here. That's just a little bit less than an inch, so I'm going to bring it up a hair more. Come on, come on up, come on up. You see me fiddling with my fingers? What are your best tools, everybody? What are your best tools? Your best tools are your hands. I'm having a lot of pain in my right hand right now, right here. Right here. I've ordered a brace to wear because... And I think it's because I spend so much time editing my videos for you guys. <laughs> so, I need some help. Alright, I've gone all the way around. It's one inch. Now I have a hemmed sleeve with glue. Now you can go to your cover stitch machine which I won't because my cover stitch has black on it and I need brown. So if I'm going to hem with the cover stitch, I'll do that very, very last and I'll put brown thread on the cover stitch machine. But see, now this sleeve, I'm going to put this sleeve into the garment and the hem is already done. I don't have to mess with that when it's attached to the garment and it's way, way bigger. All right. I'll come back when I'm putting it in the garment. Let's put the sleeve in. Take off your table so you have your arm you can get around because you're going to be sewing in a hole. The armhole. You're going to be sewing in the armhole. Alright. The blouse is inside out. The sleeves are right side out. Let's say that again. This is the way I do it now. Remember, everything I show you is the way I do it. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way. It doesn't mean there's not five other ways to do it. It's the way I do it. Okay? Sleeves are right side out. One goes in one side of the blouse, one goes in the other side of the blouse, and you're going to determine that by the notches, by the single notch and the double notch. Single notch, double notch on the sleeve, single notch, double notch in the top. All right, we're going to start here. Now, <laughs> if your life depended on picking up the right sleeve first, uh, <laughs> you better bend over and kiss yourself goodbye. All right? <laughs> so you pick it up, and you take the side seam of the sleeve, the side seam of the blouse. You put the sleeve inside the blouse. The sleeve is inside the blouse hole, okay? I have the side seam of the blouse and the side seam of the sleeve together right here in my hand. I am going to hold that together and I'm going to look to see if my notches are the same. 
Do I have two singles over here or do I have two doubles? <gasps> I think I have two singles. Oh my gosh, I think this is the first time in history, you guys, I picked up the right sleeve. <laughs> and there's two doubles. Praise the Lord. Something's finally going right. All right, now I'm going to pin. I'm going to pin, 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 because I want those seams to stay opposite of each other. The seam in the blouse goes to the back. Up here at the top of the sleeve, there's also a notch. And the notch at the top of the sleeve goes to the shoulder on the garment. The top notch of the sleeve, the, what do you call that, the cap. The top notch here on the sleeve cap goes to the shoulder seam. All right? So you're going to match those two places and you're going to pin them so the seam doesn't roll and go the wrong way. And I only have like three pins here. That's planning ahead, isn't it? I'm pinning on the 3 8 inch line. Now, you're going to stretch it, pull it. It looks like the sleeve is a little bit bigger than the armhole in this case. So I am going to do the Louise cutting method and fold it over my finger to eat up the extra ease in the sleeve cap if there is any. How do you know if there is any? When you get through pinning it, you're going to have more sleeve than you've got garment. You're going to have more sleeve than you're going to have sleeve hole. They call it an arms eye. I think that's the ugliest name. It's not so ugly to say it as it is to spell it. It's spelled like arms chi. In fact, I think that's how Peggy Sager says it. Arms chi. See? It's not very much ease, it's just a little bit. The rest of that's going to pin together very easily. The notches line up. Who's talking to me? Oh, Viv's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Viv's been shopping, shopping, shopping. Evidently, Joann's has had, had some really good sales after Christmas, and I missed them all because I'm not at the Joann's town. And my husband doesn't really like to go to Joann's. Does your husband like to? <laughs> oh, he would, but I'd feel so guilty the whole time we were there. I like to go by myself and just sit down in this pattern. This is the ABBT that was free, but now it's not free anymore, but it's still worth 10 bucks, I promise you. It's a lovely pattern, and it's worth it. If you don't even make the pattern, the directions, the instructions that come with it are priceless. Again, you don't need me. <laughs> you don't need me. So many, you know, how'd I learn it? Because there's so many places to learn things nowadays on YouTube and on people's vlogs like you're learning from me right now. I'm ending up with a little extra fullness here, so I'm just going back and making it fit. Your pins and your fingers are wonderful. All right, here's the sleeve, the sleeve hole. I'm calling it a sleeve hole. It's called an arm's eye. You should be able to see the pins. I can't because of the way the camera is. But you can see. Oh, make very, 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 very sure that when you look in here into the sleeve that you're seeing the wrong side of the sleeve and you're seeing the wrong side of the garment. That means the right sides are touching each other. And that's the way it should be. Now, I start at the side seam. I don't know why I just do. I figure I'll tie that sucker down there and then it'll be easier to go the rest of the way around. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not, but that's my thinking. Let me see. I'm still going to have it on about 2.5 and a narrow zigzag because you do not want a straight stitch anywhere in a knit or when you pull it on, that straight stitch will pop. Thread breaks faster, easier, 
thin fabric does. You hope. <laughs> you hope. You want the thread to break before the fabric does. Take the pins out, don't sew over them. 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch, 3 8 inch. Now you should have pulled this sleeve up onto yourself to make sure it fits you. Feel, here's your finger, here's your tools, here's your tools. My tools are underneath here. They're in the hole of the sleeve. My tools are in the hole of the sleeve. And as I'm sewing along, I can feel if it's smooth under there. If it's not smooth under there, I stick my tools under there and I smooth it out. I don't sew over lumps and bumps. You'll have to go back and tear them out and fix it if you do. And you can feel, your fingers can feel so much. That's why God gave us touch. Wonderful. I feel so, so sorry for blind people, but boy, my goodness, their fingers are amazing. I think of that Helen Keller. Oh, my heavens. Deaf and blind. Deaf and blind. And the things that woman did. Just beyond belief. There we are. We're all the way around and no problems. How was that? That was easy. Easy peasy. Let me cut my thread. This sleeve is in. I'm going to come around. Now right there, right here on the other side, I can see my material wasn't together very good right there. And I've got a fold. Let me show you this up close. You can see. Oh my God, I can't believe Joy screwed up. <laughs> believe it. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Don't feel like you can't sew because you make boo-boos like this. I've sewn forever. Y'all know that. See this little pleat right here? I didn't feel it with my tool. I'm going to rip it out. See here? Now, some people don't care about this, but I do. <laughs> this edge did not meet that edge. I am going to tear this out from here to here, and I'm going to re-sew it. I'll be back. All right, here's my sleeve. Here's my sleeve. When I surge it, that will come off. Here is my sleeve. Sewn in. No wrinkles. No gathers. No folds. If I was to pull the sleeve out, you would see that this is the wrong side of the garment. And the right sides of the sleeve are together. See? Awesome! So now I'm going to surge around this seam I just took. And then I'm going to hem up the bottom of the blouse. And then, and then, and then, along came joy. See there? I will put it on and show you the completely, totally done blouse with my non-matching pants. I'll show you surged real fast. Surged. Oh, but I can't sew knits because I don't have a serger. You don't need a serger. You don't need one because, repeat after me, knits do not ravel. Ta-da! <laughs> Here it is. I actually found a pair of brown pants in my closet to wear with this. How nice is that? And since these are cotton pants instead of leggings, I don't need this top to be as long as it is. The, the rule is, if you have a lot of fabric on the top, big and flowy, you're supposed to have tight on the bottom. If you have big and flowy on the bottom, you're supposed to have tight on the top. So, I don't know, I think I'll probably shorten this like to way up here I will just cut it off because I like these pants with it look how easy it is to fix just cut it off I'll put some pins in it right there where I want it okay I just went over there and grabbed a couple pins off the camera 
to see where I want it to be. And that's where I want it to be. And I want it to fit my hips a little bit tighter like that. I'm looking in the mirror. Not quite so tight. Make sure it covers up the biggest part of my tire there. This is cute. I didn't like it until I found brown pants to go with it. <laughs> so, I only make the long tops if it's to go over the leggings. Because the leggings are so skin tight through this area here. So, I will shorten it. I will have my husband help me. He will get behind me with a yardstick and he will tell me how high to fold this up in the back. So, it's the same distance from the floor as this is. I'll have him do this side, this side, and the back, and then I will simply go in there and cut off all that extra, hem it up again, and that's where I will keep this top. That's where I like it. And I think it's very wintry, and I really like it now. You can do so many things to make it more you. You know what I mean? make it more you. Now, if you knew to start with what you were going to wear it with, I'm standing on a trampoline, you guys. Yes, I do my trampoline, especially waist twist. I sort of still have a waist because of this. <laughs> I'm sure y'all want to know that. So anyway, make your first top. Let it be your muslin and then make number two and number three and number four. What do y'all think about us putting a hashtag over there on Instagram? And let's all show our tops when we get them done. Huh? Would you like to do that? Let me know. And if you all want to do it, I'll tell you what the hashtag is I come up with. Okay? Bye for now.